Hey guys, how are you doing? You know that we'll be building our own blockchain very soon and we'll be building our own NFT platform very soon. So I'm kind of building up your knowledge to the place where you'll be able to understand how the whole system works, how Web 3.0 properly works, right? And to be able to do that, um, I'm not sure if you've already watched my video on uh, Web 3.0 and blockchain and SHA-256. There are these three videos that I've already launched on my channel. Do check them out. And I'm kind of following that up with this video today where I want to show you, um, I want to help you visualize what a blockchain is, right? So I found something on the internet. I found this website called andersbrownworth.com and this person has uh, created a complete visualization of blockchain, right? Which is quite interesting. And um, so in the SHA-256 algorithm video, I showed you how it has something called as an avalanche effect, right? You change one little thing, it changes the entire, um, you change one little thing in the data and changes the entire hash for the SHA-256 uh, representation of the data, right? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping you've seen that and you've understood it. So a blockchain is basically uh, made up of many uh, individual blocks. So this is a block, right? So block has something called as the number for the block. It has something called as nuns. It has data and the hash. Now, if I change the data here uh, in the block, right, the data, the color of the block changes. So that's why I have to kind of mine it. And it takes a while. And uh, once I mine it, it changes the nuns, right? Let me show it to you again. So if I add even one more character, right, you'll see the entire hash changes, right? If I add one more character, the entire hash changes. If I add one more character, the entire hash changes. This is the avalanche effect of the SHA-256 algorithm that I've explained to you in the video. Uh, of SSA 256 algorithms, right? So uh, this is the data. The data basically, uh, here it's kind of random data, right? But it's actually going to represent um, transactional data. So like, let's say I transferred two Bitcoins to somebody and that person transferred two Bitcoins to somebody else. So all that transaction data is basically what's going to be in a block, right? That's what it's called as a block. And um, when the data changes, when uh, something happens to the data, the entire hash changes and the it, it, the block does not start making sense. That's why the color has changed. That's why you have to mine it and you have to solve this problem. Uh, and once you mine the block, the block becomes uh, ready to be added to the blockchain, right? I hope uh, till now I'm making sense. You may not understand anything till now, but when I show you the blockchain, which is the second, the third tab on this, now you'll understand much better. Let's say this is the blockchain, right? And somebody changes some data here. Now you will have to mine it, and now this blocks start making sense, the nuns changes. Uh, but you also have to mine all the other blocks in the blockchain. Why? Because all of them are pointing to the, to the block before them. That's why uh, in the block, when you saw, uh, block just stores data and hash, whereas a complete blockchain also stores the previous uh, hash. So here, since this is the first block, does not store any previous hash. But the second block, third block, fourth block, they always store a previous hash, which is the address of the um, you know block before them, right? So if I change something here, first uh, just see that this hash, right, uh, four times zero one five seven eight three, is the same uh, stored in the previous hash, right? So once I store, once I change this data, um, everything it becomes inconsistent, right? Because it was storing something else, and now it, the uh, the the previous hash has changed completely, right? And so once I mine this, the color changes and the nuns changes. Once I mine this again, the nuns changes, right? So if somebody is trying to make any changes to the blockchain, he's going to have to mine every single block in the blockchain, right? So that's what makes it secure because you change even one small data. Let's say, uh, you know, you had said that Akhil gave, um, you know, uh, let's say Robert 30 Bitcoins. And Robert gave Rupert 40 Bitcoins, right? And that's what the uh, blockchain looks like. So let me mine everything and let me show you uh, the blockchain. So that's what the transactional information is right now, right? But if I change, uh, if, if I'm a hacker, if I want to go and if I want to change something, I want, let's say I, I want to increase this, I want to say, no, he he's, let's say I'm Rupert, right? I'm Rupert the hacker. And I come here and say, I got 400 Bitcoins from Robert, right? I changed that information. Now, suddenly the entire blockchain uh, goes red saying, hey, uh, this, this information uh, does not make sense to us, right? The whole blockchain goes red. And now the hacker needs to go and uh, mine everything, right? Mine every single block. He'll have to change every single block now. 
This is because of the avalanche effect I've already showed you in the SSG 256 algorithm, right? One thing you change, even one small thing you change, uh, the whole hash changes and the hash for the entire blockchain changes, right? So everything st stops making sense completely. Now, um, so you've seen that it takes a while, but uh, the hacker is able to mine all the blocks and able to solve the entire blockchain and then he's able to make some changes, right? Even though there are, let's say, 1000 blocks in the blockchain, uh, he, uh, if he has the right computers, if he has the right, co right computational power, he'll be able to change the entire blockchain, right? He can do that. But uh, that's where the whole distributed uh, system comes in. Now, distributed basically means that the same blockchain has been copied to different peers. By peers, it could be a server or it could be somebody's personal computer, right? So that's a peer. And uh, there, there could be hundreds and thousands of peers in the entire blockchain. So this is peer A, this is peer B. This is PRC. So uh, in this case, at least um, on, on this website, uh, he has shown at least three, uh, only three peers, but there could be thousands of peers in the blockchain, right? And all of the uh, peers will have the whole copy of the entire blockchain. So if you make a change here, uh, it will make changes in all of the blocks. But if you fix these blocks, right, even if you uh, mine and fix these blocks, it won't, it won't really matter because uh, now this blockchain is not at all consistent with the blockchain below that, right? So for example, um, right now the NUNS says 27989 and whereas NUNS in the BRB says 35230 and in PRC's, PRC it says 35230, right? So these two have the same blockchain whereas this one has been hacked. So the blockchain uh, can come to know because uh, so the next video that we'll have we'll talk about consensus algorithms, right? And uh, this is a problem. The problem that you see right now, the two blockchains having the same nuns, whereas one not having the same nuns, um, is called uh, is is a consensus algorithm problem that can be solved with uh, you know Byzantine fault tolerance. We'll talk about all of that. Don't worry. Um, and this this can easily be solved, right? So that means if somebody tries to change anything, somebody tries to hack it, since the uh, blockchain is distributed and it can be checked, the facts can be checked at multiple places, we can easily come to know that this black blockchain has been hacked. And uh, even if the hacker goes through and mines every single thing, um, he can still be, you know, uh, he cannot still hack the blockchain because uh, on other peers, it's still uh, perfectly uh, all right. So um, even if like, let's say 49% of the block, like of the peers, he's able to hack, that the 51% are able to bring it back online uh, without any problems. So that's basically the uh, power and the security that blockchains can give you, right? Now let's also see what's in the tokens. Um, yeah, so tokens is another tab here that they've given you. Tokens is basically what I was trying to show you with the block and blockchain where uh, you can basically change all the, this information. So this is the kind of information that you'll have in a block, right? You'll have the $25 went from Darcy to Bingley, $4 went from Elizabeth to Jane. So let's say you want to change this. You want to say uh, it's not 106, but it's 160 uh, dollars that went from Lady uh, Catherine to Collins, right? So you now you'll have to mine every single every single block, and it takes a while, right? Um, here mining is still easy because it's uh, it's a representation, but the actual on the actual blockchains it takes a long while to basically mine and fix the nonce to match the hash, right? So you've mined all the blocks, but uh, it's not consistent with the other two blockchains, as you can see. And uh, it's easy to tell that uh, this little transaction is off, right? And the whole blockchain. So different consensus algorithms, uh, consensus algorithms can actually catch it and actually fix it and actually tell uh, where the transactions went wrong. So I hope you were able to visualize the blockchain with me and uh, understand what, how the blockchains work. And we saw the block, we saw the blockchain, we saw the distributed blockchain, and we saw how tokens and the kind of information that blockchains contain, right? So this information, uh, this video is very informative, I'm sure. And um, I'm hoping that nobody's already shown you something like this in the sense like, I'm, you probably this is the first channel where you saw something uh, like blockchains visualized, visualized so well because I was, I had to find this from the depths of the internet, <laughs> this video, the, this uh, website, sorry. So stick around, um, you know, subscribe to this channel and stick around for the other videos that come up. Uh, and I'm trying to basically bring, like build your knowledge to the part where we'll be able to build our own blockchains and our own NFT platforms. But I don't want to, uh, you know, just show you the code and, uh, and you know, I, it shouldn't happen that you don't understand the underlying concepts of how blockchain and Web 3.0 work, right? I want you to understand all of that so that when you build those platforms, all of that makes sense to you, right? Because I've seen other videos on YouTube and they're just trying to show you the code, but not actually show you the inner workings of all of this. 
So I just wanted you to, you know, kind of slowly understand the inner workings. And then when you, once you see the code, once you use these frameworks, once you use these you know, technologies that help you to build those blockchains, like Ethereum and all that, uh, it's just much uh, easier. Like you, you understand, you know, what you're doing basically. Otherwise, you just you just know okay, Ethereum is there, MetaMask is here, and you you know do something, and you use Solidity to create smart contracts. But what is all of that, right? How does it work? That's what we're learning here. So thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.